All right, it's, you might be wondering, if, some, if things are radioactive on this Earth, um, constantly spontaneously decaying, how do we actually still have radioactive isotopes if our Earth is billions and millions of years old? Well, actually, they, it takes a long time for things to decay. It doesn't happen instantly. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it happens over millions of years, such as uranium. Takes million, the half-life of uranium takes millions of years, meaning that when the Earth started, we had a certain amount, and now we have, after 4.5, I think, billion years or million years, um, half of the amount of uranium is actually left on this Earth. So what do I mean by half-life? So half-life is the time required for half of the radioisotopes nuclei to decay. So let's take strontium-90, for example. It's a radioactive isotope. Its half-life is 29 years. So if I have, if, originally, if I have um, no, no time passed by and no years, so no half-lives, um, I have in my, you know, my possession 10 grams of strontium-90. Okay? So one half-life flows by, and that's 29 years. So 29 years later, um, I original, my 10 grams that I originally had, half of it is left, as the definition of half-life states. So that means I have five grams of strontium-90 left. OK. Um, after two half-lives go by, 58 years, um, my original sample of 10 grams has gone through two half-lives. Half of it's gone after the first 29 years, and again, another half after the second 29 years, giving me 2.5 grams left after 58 years, and so on and so forth, until actually no atoms are left of strontium-90. So we could do this and fill out the chart and do this step by step by step and step, and it would take a long time. Or we can go and translate this into a formula. And the formula basically says the amount remaining, how much we have, is equal to the initial amount, which, we, which is what we did, 10, times 1 half, which is exactly what we did, times uh, to, the, uh, to the nth power. So the n is the number of half-lives we went, we went through. So the first half-life had 1, second half-life we had 1 half times 2, which is squared. Um, or not one half times one half, which is squared. So the number of half lives is n. Okay, so we can actually break down that n too, because we might not go. Uh, we might want to know like fractional half lives or things that are not full half lives. So um, let's break that down even further and say the number of half lives, which is we're going to denote as n, equals little t, which is the time that went by, divided by big t, which is the length of the half life. Okay, so let's actually put this and do this problem together. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's say we have iron fifty nine. A radioactive isotope of iron is used in medicine to diagnose blood circulation disorders. Okay, the half-life of iron-59 is 44 and a half days. How much of a two-gram sample will remain after 133.5 days? Okay, so let's actually look at our formula and plug everything in. So the amount remaining is what we're looking for. So that's x. Initially, we had two grams. Um, we're uh, we're going to multiply by one half to the what power? We didn't tell us the number of half-lives. We kept to break it down to the time elapsed, which 44 and a half days went by. Oh, no, sorry. Actually, 133 and a half days went by. The half-life was 44 and a half days. Make sure when you're doing this that these, uh, the time elapsed of the time in these time, the units of time for these two are, are the same. So you can't have like seconds up top and days on the bottom. So make sure they're actually the same. Uh, and when you, when you uh, 2 times 1 half to the 30, 133 over 5, this actually if you do this math, it actually equals three half-lives. It's going to give me x equals um, 0.25, 0 0.25 grams of Fe59 um, left over, which makes sense. It's less than half because it's more than one half-life, actually. Three half-lives went by, so it actually should be um, a lot less than two grams. So a lot of it decomposed and, and went off into uh, changed into something else. Let's do something a little bit harder. You might see um, a problem that's a little bit tougher, and that's this. <clears throat> so let's say we're talking about carbon-14, and carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope um, of carbon-12. Um, it's naturally occurring in the atmosphere. We, the atmosphere has uh, plenty of it, and it, it's always happening. Um, there's a certain radio um, ratio of this isotope in the atmosphere, always. So in this atmosphere, um, it's actually used and very helpful for plants to use for photosynthesis. So plants then take this and use it for photosynthesis. Animals then eat the plants. And so now all of the living objects actually have some ratio of carbon-14 that's equal to whatever's in, whatever's in the atmosphere. So all living objects have this in their system. And it's totally fine. Um, what happens, it, uh, over time, it'll break down. So we have carbon-14. It'll break down because uh, it is radioactive. It'll go through beta decay, and it'll change into nitrogen. No big deal. And this takes 5,730 years to occur. OK. So it's not going to, this isn't actually happening in our lifetime. But what happens when you die, 
this will start breaking down. So we're not going to be ingesting that carbon-14 anymore, and we're going to start, um, or it's going to start breaking down and decomposing into this nitrogen. So then, if a fossil's C14 ratio is 1 16th that of the atmosphere, how old is the fossil? So we're going to actually say the amount remaining is 1 16th of what the original ratio was. So we're going to say 1 16th. Um, <clears throat> the initial amount was 1. Our ratio was the same as that with the atmosphere. OK, great. Um, times 1 half, we want to figure out the number of the time elapsed. So we're looking for a little t. And we know the half-life is 5,730 years. Now I'm going to go into logarithms. I'm not going to explain logarithms. If you're interested in learning about logarithms, you might want to check out some math videos, but I'm just going to assume that you know logarithms. And say, because I'm looking for the exponent, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to say the ln of natural log of 1 16th is equal to the natural log of 1, 1 half, because natural log of 1 is 1. Natural log of 1 half um, times t to the 5730. And when natural logs, with natural logs, I can take this exponent and put it in front. So it's now because now it is not exponent anymore. So now I'm going to say, OK, the natural log of 1 16 is equal to t, I'm going to say t over 5, 7, 3, 0 times the natural log of 2. So I'm going to, well, sorry, 1 half. I'm going to divide by the natural log of 1 half. Um, and so the natural log of 1 16th over the natural log of 1 half. I'm going to break, break my calculator out to do that. This is 4 equals t over 5730. So then I'm going to just do basic algebra, multiply 4 times 5730. And that gives me 22,920 years have passed by. So this is, a good, this is called carbon dating. This is actually a good way to um, figure out how old a fossil is, and this is how this is a ratio that they use it. It's actually they use half lives. So half lives is a is a great way to figure out how old something is or how much you're going to have after a certain period of time.